Okay, so today we're going to talk about um, permutation matrices, so a specific type of matrix. So permutation is another word for rearrangement. So these are matrices that are used to rearrange or reorganize other matrices. Um, so in terms of what a permutation matrix is going to look like, um, it's a binary matrix, so that's a matrix that only has zeros and ones. Um, and it's a binary matrix in which there is only one one, so one instance of the number one in each row and column. So for example, um, in the first matrix, um, it's a binary matrix, we only have zeros and ones, but it's not a permutation matrix because for example, in this row there's two ones. In this row there's also two ones, in this row there's two ones, in this row there's two ones. So there's, um, sorry, I referred to some of the columns as rows then, but um, so binary but not permutation. Um, the second example is a binary matrix and is a permutation matrix. Okay, so if we look at every single column, in each column there's only one one, Additionally, in each row, there is also only one one. Okay, so that's a, a permutation matrix. Um, the identity matrix is a special permutation matrix. Okay, so it is a specific instance of a permutation matrix where um, it meets all those requirements. Each row only has one one, each column only has one one. Um, but it's a specific example. We would still refer to it as uh, the identity matrix. Um, and uh, I'm not sure from memory whether there's an example here, but we'll talk more about the identity matrix uh, in future videos, particularly when we look at the um, inverse matrix. Okay, so a permutation matrix can be used to rearrange the elements in another matrix. So for example, if we have this permutation matrix um, here, um, if A is the matrix PAT, so I'm just using letters here to, it helps, we can sort of see the rearrangement um, more explicitly. Um, so if A is the matrix um, containing, so it's a one by three matrix um, containing the elements P, A and T, um, then if we take that matrix and multiply it by the permutation matrix, now again, the order that you do the multiplication in depends on what's possible. So because our permutation matrix is three by three, it wouldn't be possible to do P times A, that, that multiplication is not possible, but it is possible to do A times P. Okay. So if we were to do A times P, so I've just written the answer there, but let's think through that process again to see where that comes from. So remembering that each so we started with a 1 by 3, we're multiplying a 3 by a 3 by 3, and so the result is 1 by 3. Okay, It's possible because of these being the same, the result will be 1 by 3. Um, and we do each row in the first column multiplies each matrix in the second column. So the only row multiplying by the left-hand column will go in the left-hand column of the answer. And when you do, so let me write out the actual steps. So if you P times 0, plus a times 1 plus t times 0, well p, that's 0, that's 0, and you just get left with a, okay, which is how there's an a here at the start, at the first term. The second um, term, so the only row times the middle column will go into the middle of the um, result, the middle of the answer. And again, if we write out that multiplication, what we're doing there is p times 1 plus a times 0 plus t times 0. So anything times zero is zero, okay, and we just get left with P, which is the middle um, term in the matrix. And then finally, the only row times the right-hand column, okay, again, if we write that out, it would be P times zero plus A times zero plus T times one. So anything times zero is zero, and we just get left with T. And so T becomes the um, term in the right column of our um, answer. And so we've rearranged the order of the original row matrix. Okay, What was in column one went to column two. What was in column two went to column one. And what was in column three stayed in column three. Okay, So what we're seeing in the permutation matrix, the effect of the number one in P12, so this one here, row one, column two, um, that caused, sorry, 
uh, row one, column two, um, cause the elements in column one to move to column two. Uh, sorry, I just paused the video, video there to check that statement because I don't think actually what I've got written there is correct. Let's be clear what happened. So let's just think about that first multiplication we did. Left row, sorry, only row times left column gave was this calculation here and it resulted in the letter A ending up in column one. Okay, so actually what that calculation did was to move A from column two to column one. So that was the fact that we had A1 in um, row two, column one, actually. So the effect of, so if we have a look at this blue sentence, the sentence I've just highlighted in blue here, the effect of the one in um, position two, one, okay, so that is row two, column one, is to move the elements in column two to column one. Yes, actually, that's what happened, okay? So the A moved from column two to column one. Sorry, so this, the sentence is correct. My apologies, I was misreading it in my head. Um, Okay, so then let's have a look at that purple sentence, the first one again. Okay, so then we did, yes, actually, sorry, it's correct. I was misreading it. So um, the only row times the middle column, which was to do with this one up here, which is in position one, two, what happened when we did that purple multiplication, so that was the middle term here, it moved the P to the middle of the second matrix. So it moved the P that was in the first column originally to the to the second column. So the effect of the one in P12 is to move the element or elements in column one to column two. Yes, that's what happened. And the fact that there was a um, there was a one in row three, column three is what meant that the element that was in column three stayed in column three. Okay, so that was the green. Um, and that was because of this one in this row here. Okay, the one in position 3, 3. Okay, if we were to do, this time let's start with a column matrix. So it's a, my apologies, it's a uh, 1 by 3 matrix, sorry, 3 by 1 matrix. Um, and in order to make the multiplication um, work, we would have to pre-multiply by the permutation matrix. Okay, and what we end up with will also be a column. So in this instance, thinking about what happens, again, let's um, color code to see what happens. So multiplying the first row by the only column, so the top row by the only column gives us the answer in the top row, okay? And that is the, the effect of that, the one in this position, the one in row one, column two, has the effect this time of moving the element that is in um, row two to row one, okay? So that's this first statement here. The effect of the one in P12 is to move the element in row two to row one. And it's because we're doing the multiplication in the opposite order. So we're reading what happens with the two one, the one two in the subscript the other way. This time it goes from row two to, to row one, okay? I wouldn't get too bogged down in these rules, okay? I really, I would just do the multiplication and see what happens, okay? So I wouldn't worry too much about these sentences. It's confusing whether it's rows or columns and what's actually happening. Um, Okay, so then let's think about the second multiplication. So if we were to do only row times, sorry, middle row times only column, that go, the result of that goes in the middle. And again, that's one times A, so that's A, zero times R plus zero times T. So we just get A. And so that is the effect there is the, um, the number one in position uh, two one. And the effect here is to take the element that was in row one and move it to row two. Okay, which is what happened there. And then, so that's that green. And then, sorry. So again, we've got two to position, row two to row one, um, row one to row two. And again, we can expect that this time, when we do the bottom row times the only column, okay, the effect will be for the T in the bottom here to remain at the bottom. And that's because we've got a one in position three, three. So column row three stays in row three. So again, I wouldn't worry too much about the sentences, the, the sentences here. I would focus on just doing the manipulation, doing the multiplication and seeing what happens. Okay, And again, this relies on you having an, a clear understanding of how matrix multiplication works. It's not sufficient to just always do matrix multiplication using your CAS. You're not gaining that understanding of what's happening in all these processes. Okay, so in general, if P is a permutation matrix, 
then AP, so pre, sorry, post multiplying by the permutation matrix, will permute, which is to rearrange the columns. Okay, so if we use the if the permutation matrix comes second, which was what happened in this first example, the columns are what's rearranged. If the permutation matrix comes first, if we pre-multiply by the permutation matrix, so permutation matrix multiplied by another matrix, um, then um, we're rearranging the rows. So in order for obviously in order for any permutation or rearrangement to occur, the matrix multiplication needs to be possible. So the dimensions need to work. Okay. Let's still consider the matrices um, P, A and B. And my apologies, in your notes, that should have gone onto the next page so you can see it. Apologies for that. Um, so still considering those same um, three matrices. If we were to calculate A times P squared, then what would be happening? So if we were to just do A times P, that's a column rearrangement of matrix A. If we were to then times that by P again, so hence doing a times p squared, we're going to be doing that column rearrangement a second time. Okay, so we're going to be multiplying, if we multiply the um, A matrix, whatever that might be, in this case that's the matrix containing P, A and T, if we multiply it by the permutation matrix twice, that is we multiply by the permutation matrix squared, what we're doing is applying that rearrangement twice. So in this instance, that means in the first um, multiplication, uh, column uh, column one went to column two and column two went to column one and column three stayed where it was. So when we just did P times A, so if we just have A, it was P, A, T. If we then did P times A, the first two columns switched around and we got that. And then if we um, do, sorry, I've got the number around, A times P. And then if we did A times P squared, so doing that rearrangement again, again what would happen is the first two columns would swap, but so that would bring us back to PAT. So what we actually see in this instance is applying the transformation twice um, takes us back to the original. Um, what you can actually do though is you can work out, to make the multiplication a bit easier for yourself, you can get your CAS to actually work out, rather than do it twice, get your CAS to actually work out what the permutation matrix squared is, that's this, you can see in the CAS screenshot, and then multiply by that. And what we see here is that P squared results in the identity matrix, okay, so that is where the ones are only on the leading diagonal. And when we multiply any matrix by the identity matrix, it remains unchanged. So what we're seeing here is applying this um, permutation twice results in no changes to the matrix. And that's because when we, um, we can see that when we square the permutation matrix, we get the identity matrix. And so therefore it won't cause any change um, to the original matrix. If we were to calculate P squared um, times B, we would be doing the row rearrangement twice. Okay, on matrix B. And in this case, since P squared is the identity matrix, if we were to do the row rearrangement twice, um, it's just going to take us back to what the original matrix was. Okay, let's think about a different permutation matrix this time. So um, consider the permutation matrix um, drawn there and another matrix M. Perform a column permutation matrix, sorry, a column permutation of matrix M by evaluating M times P. Okay, so let's write this out. So we're going to have M times P, okay, which means M is 1, 3, 5, minus 2, 6, 7, 0, minus 1, 4. That's M. And we're going to multiply that by P, which is 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0. So we've got 3 by 3 times 3 by 3. So the multiplication is possible, and what we'll end up with will also be 3 by 3. The permutation matrices are going to, you're always going to end up with the same dimensions as the non-permutation matrix because remember you're just rearranging the rows and columns, you're not removing any elements. Um, okay, so let's think about this multiplication. So top row times left column is going to give us the number 5 because we have 1 times 0, which is 0, plus 3 times 0, which is also 0, plus 5 times 1, which is 5. Okay, so we're seeing um, the number five go there. If we were to now do top row times middle column, we're going to do one times one, which is one, plus three times zero, which is zero, plus five times zero, which is also zero. So we just get one times one, which is one. And then if we were to do 
top row times left column, sorry, times right column, 1 times 0 is 0, plus 3 times 1 is 3, plus 5 times 0 is 0. So we've just got 3 times 1, which is 3. And so what we've seen there is that the top row has been rearranged, okay? That is, the columns are being rearranged. So the position of every number in the top row, it hasn't, they haven't moved out of the top row, they're still in the top row, so they haven't switched rows, but the columns have been adjusted. So we can continue to do the rest of the multiplication, but we know that the second matrix is a permutation matrix. And in just having done the first row, we can now see how the matrix is being permuted or rearranged. Okay, so we can now see that the numbers that were in the third column are now in the first column. So we can simply complete the column without needing to do the other um, six multiplications. We can see that the numbers that were in the first column are now in the second column. So again, we can just complete that column from the original matrix. And we can also see that the numbers that are now in the third, um, that were in the second column, are now in the third column. So again, we can just complete that um, column using what we've learnt just from doing the first three multiplications. Okay. And then part B, perform a row permutation of matrix M by evaluating P times M. So this time we'll do the multiplication the other way around, so that it's the rows that get rearranged rather than the um, columns. Okay, so we're going to have 1, 3, 5, minus 2, 6, 7, um, 0, minus 1, 4. Okay, so this time if we were to do um, row times column, so let's do top row times left column to work out what goes in the top left. Okay. So we're going to do 0 times 1, which is 0, 1 times negative 2, which is negative 2, and 0 times 0, which is 0. So we just have negative 2 in the top left. What we know this time is that the rows are going to rearrange. So last time I stuck with the top row and multiplied each column to see how the columns got rearranged. But this time I'm going to change the row, but just stick with the first column. Okay. So now the... Um, 0 times 1, which is 0, 0 times negative 2, which is 0, 1 times 0, so that's 0. And then again, if I do the bottom row, sorry, let me change my pink colour, if I do the bottom row times the left column, 1 times 1 is 1, sorry, I put that 0 in the wrong place, didn't I? Sorry, middle row times left column goes in the middle left of your answer, bottom row times left column goes in the, in the bottom left. Okay. And I'm sure you can predict that this has to be a 1 here, given that what we're doing is rearranging um, that first column, rearranging the rows. So um, 1 times 1 is 1, 0 times negative 2 is 0, and 0 times 0. Okay, so what we can see here now is that the second row in the original matrix has become the first row, so we can complete that. The bottom row in the original matrix has become the middle row, so we can complete that. And the top row in the original matrix has become the bottom row. And so we can complete that. Okay, and we can see how our matrix has been, been rearranged. Use your CAS to evaluate P cubed times M. Okay, so P cubed times M will be applying the row permutation three times. Okay, so if we do P cubed times M, let's get our CAS uh, to work that out for us. So let's enter in our permutation matrix first. So it's 3 by 3. And it is 0, 1, 0. You use tab to move through the boxes in the matrix. It won't, um, if you keep tabbing, it'll move on to the next line rather than outside of the matrix. Whereas if you use the arrows, um, when you're at the end, if you press across, you'll end up out of the matrix. Whereas if you're pressing tab, um, it'll just move on to the next row in the matrix. Um, okay, sorry, so the next row is 0, 0, 1. So at this point, if I press tab, it'll take me to the bottom left square, whereas if I press across, um, it'll take me out of the matrix. Or if I press down and across twice, it's more, more key presses. So um, you can use tab to navigate these sorts of templates. Um, so 1, 0, and 0. Okay, we want to cube that, power of 3. And we're going to multiply that by our other 3 by 3 matrix which is 1, oh, sorry, 3, 5, negative 2, 6, 7, 0, negative 1, and 4. 
All right, so sorry, that arrow's in the way there. Let's move that. And what we find is we get 1, 3, 5, negative 2, 6, 7, 0, negative 1, 4. And that's actually just equal to M, the original matrix. So what can we say about P cubed then? So the only way that multiplying something by M still gives us M is if P cubed is the identity matrix. And that's going to happen if you've got um, a th if you've got a three by three matrix that you're rearranging the rows and columns. Okay, no matter how the re rearrangement happens, if you do it three times when you've only got three rows or three columns, depending on which you're rearranging. Um, so in this case, the um, pre-multiplying is multiplying is rearranging the rows. So if we've only got three rows and we apply whatever the permutation is three times, it's going to have to get us back to where we started. Okay. In the previous example, we found we got back to where we started only in two um, transformations, but that's because one of those um, permutations didn't actually move one of the, it was only two columns actually moving each time, and so doing it twice got us back to the beginning. Okay, So we should be able to check that if I um, copy this and just delete that matrix and just work out what P cubed is, it is indeed the identity matrix, and so therefore we're not changing the original matrix by multiplying by P three times. Okay, so the work today is um, a worksheet that's in the back of your red booklet in Appendix A um, on permutation matrices.